Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Michelle and Marla and Dawn. Hello, everybody. How is everybody tonight? Let's see. Working and lurking, Marla. Thank you for showing up tonight. And Dawn. What is Scaredy Cats? It says, are you working at Scaredy Cats? <laughs> and Michelle. Glad to have you here. Glad to have you here. Hey, um, let's see. Oh. oh, I'm glad you're better. Did you get the phone call, Michelle? Did you get the phone call you've been waiting, you were waiting for? No, we're working on a custom, okay. It's a portrait of a lady in a white cream colored car and a cream and beige in the background. Oh, I'm absolutely bored with no vibrant color. Oh my gosh. That would drive me crazy. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I hope it was just something innocent and nothing, um, nothing too over the top. <laughs> Oh, I have had one exhausting day today. Oh my gosh. You have to you guys will have to keep me uh keep me up and moving tonight. <laughs> I have my tea tonight, my plain old tea. And today we did um two different kinds of cookies. It was exhausting. <laughs> we did. I don't know if you can see them. I'm trying to show them in here. Um, we did almond candy canes. And out of the same recipe, recipe we make um, green wreaths. And we also did, we called peeling bells. And that is an orange and a lemon bell. So, hi, Tammy. So, those are the cookies for tonight. <laughs> I, I picked out the ones that had a little bit browner back than I would have liked. <laughs> but those are, those are tonight's cookies. Um... We started like at 8.30 in the morning and they were just finishing up at 3 o'clock when I went to work. So then I was at work. Um, oh man. It's been crazy because my mom's oven hasn't been working. So we've been using all mine oven. And uh, she won't get her oven until November 3rd or something like that. So that'll be another week. Um without an oven it's going to be exhausting uh let's see i want to show you why well, did get this one done last week <laughs> a, a disembodied mandala in the middle of it all right and there's one and Put them over here with the others. And I also got a, a 30 by 30 done. You know, 40 by 40. An FG normal. I'm going to turn off the background a second. I think. Um, so you can actually see it. Go into settings. And background. Okay, now you can see. From FG Normal. Really pretty. What it didn't have, um, like when you do letters on the budget ones, they don't always have a clear black outline. I made, there was enough 310s in it, 
to make all the lines, the stained glass lines, very clearly black. So that's what I did on this. I love it. The hummingbirds at the bleeding heart, um, the bleeding heart flowers. Really, really nice. And tonight I'm working on, I think it's um, like a diamond painting, painting factory. I'm not sure which one, where I got it from. That's the one I'm working on tonight. It's got a pseudo, a little bit like stained glass look, but not quite. So let me put my, my background back on and say hello again to everyone. Miss Tammy, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, husband. <laughs> Tammy says hi. Yeah, we didn't get to, we didn't get to talk too much today. Just a little bit. Um, I have uh, two. Um, uh, I have two Christmas. Diamond Art Clubs that I'll be featuring this weekend. Sneak peeking. They said they might be up on Pinterest or Instagram soon. Um, anytime this week. And I can put them up anytime this week. But I just picked them up for my husband tonight. So they'll have to wait until I get them finished. Oh, thank you, Marla. What events is everyone doing for November? Good question yes baby i found the special package <laughs> he um i have to put him in the refrigerator and get them cold first there's some kind of a special it's not a wine cooler it's i forget what you call it jack daniels um It's a fruity beverage from <laughs> Jack Daniels. So I have to put it in the fridge and and get it cold. <clears throat> oh my goodness. I haven't had uh, much time to rest today. So you guys all have to help me keep the conversation going today. I'm like in and out watermelon cooler that's what it is yes jack daniels watermelon cooler that's what is awaiting me did everyone see the pens from diamond pen i went blank help don't pee <laughs> i hear there were there somebody had new pens the diamond art club was supposed to have new pens Not decided on what I'm doing in November yet. Yum, sounds good. They, I, yeah, I can't wait to try them. Michelle, you haven't decided on November yet. I guess it was a, it was a tough month this month, so we'll give you a pass on that one. Diamond Pen Pals. Oh, I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them. Um. Y'all remember Tracy, uh, a good friend of mine who was in chat with us for a while? Um, she needs some prayer. Just having everybody know if you can put Tracy on your prayer list, I would appreciate that. Um, it tastes just like watermelon juice, the light kick, not too sweet. I'm looking forward to it. What's Renee? What's Renee doing? Oh, um, pens for $30. Their Black Friday is on November 3rd. 
and um, Craftably had a, a Black Friday weekend already as well. And uh, on their clearance items and things especially, I just, I was going to get a few things. But then the shipping ended up being twice what I would have spent on the items. And I just couldn't, I just couldn't, couldn't do it. Oh, thank you, Tammy. Oh, okay. Renee is Diamond Pen Pal. Okay, very good. I have to write these details down. <laughs> you know me in details. Um, my organizing gal was here yesterday for the first time. We had a good day together. She helped me clean out my... Um, uh, most of my kitchen, well, not most, but like half of my kitchen. And we worked together for three hours. Anybody buying stuff during 11, 11 AliExpress sale? Yeah, I don't, I don't buy from AliExpress too much anymore. Oh my goodness. Excuse me. I didn't mean to yawn. Um, the first thing we really did was clean up my baking drawer with all the, you know, the measuring cups and spoons and stuff. And she hung a few things, a few of the big spoons up on my wall. And um, we cleaned off the one, most of the one counter. Uh, a couple of the cabinets that had my plates and cups and mugs. I have like a bag and a half to go to Karen share, which is our local thrift store. I had thrown a few things out and, uh, Oh yeah. My, uh, my breakfast cabinet as well. Um, and a few things I gave mom because she entertains and I don't like a whole bunch of paper cups and things like that and divided uh, plastic dishes since I don't make meals for anybody and she does so she can use that. I used to use it for taking like luncheon stuff in to work and I don't now. I don't need to do that now. Oh, today with the girls at the club, I think it was about six or seven of them. We did another diamond painting sticker. So we ha I had an extra half an hour today that I could do that with them. That was fun. They loved that. Um, let's see. I have a list of things she's going to keep me accountable to, my organizing gal, before the next time we meet. We have to decide on the next time. I want to get a few things done. And uh, she moved some things. We moved some things out of the way that um, I'll need for the upcoming sale, November 2nd, I think it is, 2nd or 3rd, whatever that Saturday is. Uh, at a local firehouse, their fall sale. Where did my calendar go? There it is. November 4th is the sale. The local one. November 10th. I'm going by November 10th, I'm gonna have some bundles of like budget paintings and stuff for sale for everyone here. So I'll be I'll be on live November 18th. Um, at probably 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am looking at my schedule and I'm thinking, holy crud, I, this is just crazy. <laughs> my schedule is absolutely nuts. And I can't believe it's almost time for 
uh, for the sale already. It's almost November, you guys. It's almost November. What what happened? It was just summer. I'm trying not to get too overwhelmed. It just is getting to be a lot. It was just summer. <laughs> I have a, a med recheck on Thursday. I have an online thing tomorrow. Oh my gosh. Hey, Snuggy. Glad to have you here. Glad to have you here. Welcome aboard. We were talking about November. Can you believe it's November already? It's unbelievable. And then I'm looking at my schedule for November. And a friend of mine wants to go on retreat for a weekend. And I'm like, I don't know when. <laughs> you just woke up from a nap. I almost fell asleep in my chair. I almost didn't make it here in time. Well, I was about two minutes late. You guys hung in there. <laughs> Thank you for putting... <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's cool. So what's everybody crafting on tonight? What are you drinking? What are you crafting on tonight? I still have to take a picture of my, my Christmas cookie plate in the recipes from today. Didn't get to do that yet. But here they sit, teasing me. <laughs> teasing me. I want to eat them, but I want to take a picture of them first. Crafting with Lucretia. Oh, I like that name. Country Blessings and Water. Cold decaf coffee. Hot tea and relaxing. Awesome. Working on no one fight alone. All right. Yeah, I'm not. My mind is a blank, gals. I My mind is a total blank tonight. You're going to have to help me carry it through. Um, let's see. I really, I really am like blanking out. My mom's got her dollhouse gal coming tomorrow to help work on the dollhouse. And oh, one of the dollhouse items I got from mom was a little Christmas tree with presents. And again, my camera's going to go bonkers. So I got a little Christmas tree for her dollhouse, but she's not going to get it till Advent. <laughs> um, and I don't know. I've got some. I've got some goodies from Tamu. I could show tonight too. Am I crafting anything? <laughs> Um, let's see. Okay, Dawn is working on Spring Matters by Pinson. That's a good one. I am doing the, I think it's, I, I finally put up the, the, the unwrapping of them, and I think it's from Diamond Painting Gifts. It's uh, totally disappeared. 
<laughs> it's just one of the sunflowers. I'm paying gifts. I'm working on that tonight. And I'm just going to put the big... What I usually use when I'm working is a light pad. And I have one of those... Um, those um, black... Oh, this thing. It's a black metal stand, and I'm totally disappeared. Behind it. Here's Tracy. Here she be. Hello, girlfriend. Ugh. I'm going to put that down. I don't need it when I'm working here with you guys. You move the cookies out of the way and the pen and the cookie sheets. Let's see. You finished an autumn junk journal for a swap? Ooh. Oh. We'd love to see it. Yeah, the invisible host. I keep like bouncing out of um, being seen. Hey. <laughs> yes, you can see the cookies. Okay. Hopefully, unless I disappear again. <laughs> they have, um, we did almond candy canes. So we are rolling a whole lot today. And we, we also make wreaths out of the same almond dough so we'll color them green and we also did called peeling bells and they're one's an orange and one's a lemon and i think one of them we put the green cherries in and one of them we put the red cherries in <laughs> one's orange and one's lemon these buggers taste fantastic. And if you like almond, love almond. It's just that they are, um, they take a while to do. So. <laughs> I backed down me. It's over in the studio, but I'll take pics and post them on the page. Yes, please. That would be so good. Oh, they are yum. And, I, you know, I don't know why I haven't posted. I took pictures every week and even took pictures of the recipe pages. And I don't know why I haven't posted them up to the Facebook site myself. But <laughs> um, just to, to update everyone, remind everyone, we are... Uh, <laughs> well, these were like rolling the little snakes. You know how you like you used to roll Play-Doh into snake shapes? This is these are like rolling in that respect. We're rolling cookie dough in another couple weeks for the painted cookies, and that takes even longer during the day to do. Um so We're doing um, uh, Christmas cookie recipes, Christmas cookie and dessert recipes over on the Facebook group. If you want to participate, you can put a recipe up on there and uh, points if you have a picture, triple points if you, I don't, the points aren't worth anything, but you know, uh, triple points if you have uh, a picture of yourself covered in flour or whatever while you're making them. <laughs> And there's some really delicious recipes up there already. That crab dip. Oh, my Michelle, I cannot. That just crab dip sounds fantastic. Hubby, if you haven't seen the crab dip recipe that Michelle put on my Facebook page, you have got to see it. It looks fantastic. It looks so good. And what I'm going to do with the recipes uh 
toward Christmas more. I'm going to put them all into an ebook for y'all and put it on um, up on the Facebook site for y'all to have. have to look through your recipes. Yes, please. Oh, you, th that that cake looks awesome too. Looks absolutely mouthwatering. <clears throat> I cannot stop myself from yawning tonight. I need a real good nap tonight, really. Um, let's see. <clears throat> what is that that I got to do? I don't remember. I got um, a piece of clothing and some more like uh, cheapo fountain pens. And I got a pack of like perpetually sharp pencils. They're kind of fun. They come with a big bulky eraser on the end. And they're, it's almost like perpetually sharp because you twist it out through a tip. But they're not very dark. They don't write very dark. I like a nice dark pencil. I like it to stay sharp and I like it dark too. I don't know, Tammy. I don't know if I have a day off soon. I did what I thought was a day off on Sunday, but it didn't turn out to be that way. Um, I did get to talk to my uh, German friend. Uh, she had just gotten back from a trip home to Germany. And I went to seminary with her, and we, we talked for an hour or so. But I had to get ready for cookie day and for the organizer. So I had to wa finish washing my dishes and, you know, want your organizer to come in and have the place look in her wreck. <laughs> no, but this gal was neat. Her name is Yasmin, and she... uh she's younger than I am. She's so thin. She's a dancer. And her grandmother is a hundred years old and her grandmother still dances. It's like, it's amazing. It's amazing to hear. She was getting me to think about things in a different way. She is always thinking of like, what, how do you want this space to function? Not just now, but in the near future. Like, how do you want it to feel? Um, how do you want it to feel when you come into the room? How do you want it? Uh, what can you imagine this space to be in five years from now? What do you really want to be doing in this space? So she was thinking in that way. The other way is, oh, um, do you can you trust the universe to provide that for you when you need it in the future for those of us who like have a creative brain and can think of something useful to do with it with whatever's there um especially like with recyclables and stuff right now just moving this down a little bit can you trust the universe to provide it for you when you need it I did recycle a bunch. I did throw out a bunch too and had a couple bags that went to be um, the local thrift store. And I had some mugs and cups in there that, that I wasn't using anymore. Actually one of them was a diamond painted cup. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to sell that in one of the sales. 
Um, so she's trying to get me to think of things in a different way than I thought of before. Yeah, trust the universe that it will provide what you need when you need it. And, and allow things to flow through you to someone else. Make things be about your personality and what you're allowing to flow out through you rather than um, rather than having it there as a symbol for something. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's that's some of the things that we were talking about yesterday. I'm not the I know I'm not the only one that has clutter <laughs> or has craft clutter. But then we had um the Boys and Girls Club. We had one one teacher that um isn't coming back. And she's for a grade higher up than me. And it would be a position that would not entail the uh, cleaning the part of cleaning, you know, scrubbing the tables and mopping the floors and all that kind of stuff. It would be a position that I would have to do the emailing to the teachers and things like that, which I really feel like I can do now. Um, so I asked to be considered for that position, which is the same times a day. It would still be my 20 hours a week. Uh, <clears throat> The, um, the added responsibility of speaking with the teachers. But right now, they're uh, just trying to keep things afloat. So I asked her if I could apply for that. Yeah, about that, I need to organize. <laughs> yeah, I... I would really... I'd love the position even more if I could just spend the time with the kids help them with their work, get them where they need to be and not have to clean the tables and the floors and that kind of thing. That would make, make it less exhausting for me, I believe. But there's no guarantee. <coughs> no guarantee. Um, so... Uh, Um, let me load up my diamond painting pen here. You started to clean your basement, but now everything is in boxes and groups. Well, that's a good start. That's a good start. I think my mom would feel better if her oven were... <laughs> For oven were done and in place. You plans to rearrange your room this week. Well, there you go. I'm glad I'm not the only one moving things around. But I can tell you, um oh somebody's getting oh it was that a question? Getting company sis? <laughs> Um, I apologize. I can't stop yawning. This is just ridiculous. Really ridiculous. I guess I won't be on too long tonight. Just, uh, you know. I really do want to use my light pad, though. It's one of those cordless ones. That you just push the button on. 
Let's see if I can just use that until it runs out of juice. Yeah, that's not too bad. And I put it on the one of the lower modes, so that shouldn't be too bad for here. Yeah, we were all hoping for you. I wish, but sadly, no. Just moving around to make more room for craft stuff. Well, that's also a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I seriously need to go through my stuff sometime. Yeah, and I'm I'm hoping that as I get things done, maybe when the kitchen's done, I'll show you the before and after pictures so you can see that I've uh, made a little progress anyway, a little at a time. I'm not going to completely embarrass myself and show it right away. <laughs> but I'm hoping that it will... Um, Mm -hmm. Major progress. My craft stuff is all over the place. I need to organize. Me too. And some of my craft stuff is on the kitchen counter. On one of the two of them. And I don't have much counter space as it is. So I really need to uh, be careful with that. Let's see. One of them is uh, junk journaling, a, a bag of junk journaling things. And what did I do with my little, the little baggies. I need the little baggies. I don't want to get up and get any. <laughs> I don't want to get up and get any. Do I have any in here? Oh, we do. Uh, one of these things. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, come on. There's some baggies in this one. old diamond art club kit. I'll try those. <sighs> so what's everybody else's week like? Talk to me. Tell me what you're doing this week. Any interesting plans? What do you do for Thanksgiving? Or actually, actually, what are you going to be doing for Halloween? Um, the club has the day off on Halloween. So I have a free day next Tuesday. This is the first week that I'll be working every single day. Part time. Um, I mean, it makes sense. If the kids are going to go out trick-or-treating and stuff like that, they don't want to be sitting around doing homework. And I don't think the... The actual, um, the teachers will be giving them homework on Halloween night, knowing that they won't get it done. So. Huh. I have to, um, 
next week on Friday, we have a like a party at the, the kids club that they invite the entire neighborhood to. And they do little games and, and things. They want to have me doing temporary tattoos and stuff like that. And even the adults are supposed to dress up. So I think I'm going to be wearing uh, a dress that I bought in Ghana, West Africa. I'll have to put like a sweatshirt, not a sweatshirt, but like a turtleneck or something underneath it. I'm hoping and praying I can still fit into it. I want to, I think, I think I'm going to wear that. Taking your grandson out, trunk or treating. That's a good idea. Sleeping and as for Thanksgiving, it's just me and my mom. Okay. Granddaughter's supposed to come down Thursday. So a little diamond painting when she's here. Oh, cool. Cool, cool. I haven't decided Thanksgiving yet. We don't get that many kids. In the you know coming in, but my daughter's really trying to actively um, get them to come in. She's got these skeletons doing weird things in <laughs> in the uh, in the yard. She's got one sitting in a flower pot. She's got um, a couple like two of them carrying another one. Uh, she, she's having all kinds of doing fun things in the yard. She's been seeing displays of skeletons doing strange things. The, the one, the one had, uh, that, that she kept telling me about had skeletons, um, like roasting marshmallows over a fake fireplace. She said over the summer they were up and it looked like they were on like lounge chairs at the beach with those old fashioned, um, old fashioned like reflectors sunning themselves. She said another one looks like they were digging a, a flower bed. So she's trying to make some really fun, like, little skeleton displays. Last year she had the lawn tractor out, uh, the lawnmower, riding lawnmower out. And she had, like, one coming out from underneath, like it was, like, being run over by the lawnmower. <laughs> she's a creative gal, too. She really is. And, uh. She has a lot of fun decorating. She put some kind of um, a giant skull up hanging from like the flagpole or something. And then when you go underneath it, it's supposed to scare you and make noise. But I walked underneath it tonight to get something from down at the house and it didn't, didn't speak to me. <laughs> I'm glad about that, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I, I knew that it was there, though. I, you know, was waiting for it to say something to me, but it didn't. So, I'm not, I'm not really into Halloween. Never really have been. But the kids like it, so what can I do? It's an excuse for candy. They have trunk treat here, too. One of our local churches has it. They don't always have them on Halloween night, though. Which I thought was the purpose of some of them. Stay. There's a bag here that keeps wanting to fall off. Fall over. Only in it for the candy. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> for sure. For sure. For sure. But 
There's a lot of static in these drills tonight. They're jumping all over. The, they're jumping up to meet my pen, and I don't like that because then they don't stick well on the pen where I want them to. Oh, my. Usually we do our Thanksgiving like the week before. And sometimes we even do an extra Easter like the week before. Because uh, my mom thinks, you know, everybody's got someplace else to be. And she loves entertaining. She wants everybody at her place. So she just compromises on every holiday but Christmas. Christmas is her holiday. <laughs> so... I can't blame her. She really loves entertaining. She's like, I would say she's Martha Stewart and Martha of Bethany. Martha Stewart and Martha of Bethany all rolled up into one. And she is. She really likes to entertain. She made this, this um, centerpiece, this pumpkin centerpiece out of pumpkins, like fabric pumpkins she got at the dollar store. And she hot glued some silk like fall leaves in between them. She saw it in a magazine somewhere and uh, just said, I'll get my hot glue gun out and put it together. Uh, you know, it's just amazing. It really looked pretty. Everybody commented on it today. So... Um, let's see. I put a trailer up on the um, Drawing Near uh, YouTube channel. Just a little like what the channel's about type of thing. I put that up. You know, it's like I get stuck in the mindset that, you know, you want it perfect. You want things to come out perfect. And it kind of paralyzes you so you don't do anything. I've been thinking about it and thinking about it and, and wanting to get it just right. And I don't know. I think I got that way about homework assignments too. When I was younger, I just wanted it to be perfect, but at some point you just have to get it done. Having something done is better than nothing. And It will change and evolve. So I just had to get it up and get it, get something up on the site. Um, I need to dedicate more time to getting that site up and running. I remember when my kids were little. Hmm, I don't know. All these Reese's cups look kind of sketchy to me. I'm going to have to confiscate them for your own good, kids. <laughs> yeah, there was that. <laughs> my daughter would... Um, and I guess my mom did that this too. And I guess I did it with my kids too, just to a certain degree. Like, you could have so many pieces a night. You know, it's all yours, and we'll keep it on top of the refrigerator for you. But you could have so many pieces a night. <laughs> they, they didn't know that every once in a while a piece would go missing <laughs> from their bag. 
as it sat atop the refrigerator. Refrigerator. Nobody does that, do they? <laughs> no. Yeah, well, stealing a couple of pieces of Halloween candy that they'll never miss, you know. She even put some in the freezer one time. They had gotten so much. She had candy in the freezer that she was still metering out in the spring before Easter came. It's just crazy. came to a point where it's like, okay, no more houses. You've gone to enough places. You have enough candy for like 20 people here. I remember one Halloween. Oh, wait a second. Did the organizer start in the kitchen? Yes. Yep. We started in the kitchen. And like I was just saying a little bit ago, um, yeah, we uh, were working on my baking area since that's the place that would give me the most change for right now. Um, we got the, the drawer with all the baking supplies, like the measuring cups and spoons and things like that done and I can actually find exactly what I needed including the grater for the the orange rind and I fit I got my rice cooker out and made rice in my rice cooker for lunch for today I did it last night it smelled so good I had to have buttered rice before bed because it smelled so good um I could I got rid of a like two bags, of, like bag and a half full of stuff for a thrift shop, gave a bag of divided plastic ware and paper cups to my mom because she entertains and I don't, so she can use that stuff. And threw out a few things. We went through my plates and glassware and tea mugs, my breakfast supplies, and I got most of a counter cleaned off and some places in front of kitchen cabinets. So I have had a full open area to work in. I used to tell them they couldn't eat the miniature Hershey chocolates because it was easy for people to damage. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky, Tammy. My son once stole a five pound bag of sugar Hit it in his room and ate it. His sweet tooth was legendary. <laughs> my grandson, though, his nephew doesn't like candy at all. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I can't imagine not liking candy at all. <laughs> what if others oh, the little baggie? Um... Yet at one Halloween, I guess I was, I was in my late teens, early twenties, and I worked at a place called James Way. It was like Walmart, not quite as big, obviously, but um, it was like a Woolworth or or um, Ames. Ames was the main competitor. Anyway, I was working the service desk, which is like in charge of the other cashiers. And on one Halloween, I was in the choir at church. So I wore, um, we had, it was, um, thin black robes with the white, with the long sleeves, like big longy sleeves. Um, so I wore the, the, the white long sleeve top over something white and I found a pair of angel wings or made a pair of angel wings and I put on my roller skates because I always tease them 
at service desk that I was going to, one of these days I was going to wear roller skates and roller skate back and forth between all the cashiers to get what they needed. So that night I was an angel on roller skates <laughs> for one Halloween. It was fun. It was so much fun. I was so tempted to wear my roller skates every week that way. So much fun. Maybe you go trick or treating for me then. <laughs> That's a good way to do it. Maybe it would be easier on her to do, just guessing. <sighs> yeah. So it it was done some fun things. My one time my um my brother and I were dressing up for this Cub Scout. And he was in Cub Scouts, so this is even back even further. My my dad thought he was clever, and my mom, I forget which one. But I had two cardboard boxes, painted them black, put white spots on them, and made us a pair of dice. <laughs> and we would have won, too, had they not recruited my mom to be one of the judges. I was so teed off because <laughs> I was sure we could have won, but regardless, W is number five. Let me get number five out here. Oh, there it is. Um. <laughs> Snake eyes. <laughs> oh, I think we had more than one spot on each one, but oh my gosh, we made up my son one time. We got a, a cardboard box. We had an extra um, toilet seat brand new brand new and we got some cardboard boxes and he wanted to be a toilet <laughs> in elementary school so he even had we even had a roll of toilet paper like attached to it <laughs> he he thought it was hilarious that he was a toilet walking through the streets, the um, hallways of the um, elementary school. You know how they have the Halloween parades in school? He just, he thought it was hilarious. We thought it was hilarious because he could actually lift up the lid, you know, from inside the lid would go up. <laughs> we had a lot of fun helping our kids with their Halloween costumes. Organizing is interesting to me and could use tips myself too. Well, like, like I, the, the main one I was thinking of that she was teaching me yesterday, and I really have to think about it, <clears throat> is especially when you have a um, creative mind and you think, oh, I could use this um, sometime soon. I, I could use that. I could use this. But, and, and like I said in the one video, we all have, limited time, space, finances, and health. And when we're organizing, all of it, you know, is taken into account. And you, you can only have, like, so much in your space, even though as creative people, you might think there's always a use for everything, and I got to keep it until this, or I can see when I'm going to do that. And a, a lot of my keeping was for something in the future is for something in the future. I'm not through it yet. Um, she said, you, you, you have to think about, do you trust the universe? In other words, do you trust God? Do you trust that there will be, that there will be enough, that there is, that there will always be something available for you when you need it. And thinking back, 
even during the toughest times of my life, there were a time when our family for a while was on, um, you know, food stamps or welfare or whatever temporarily when my kids were little and there were times due to no fault of, of our own, we almost lost the house and things like that. There were just times when we, you didn't know where the next $2 were coming from, but yet, I think sometimes the older you get, the more you realize that there's always something available somewhere. There's always some way that, that help is available to you. There's always, something's always provided. Um, You know, somebody would come over with groceries or whatever. Um, it was not easy to live through, but instead of a scarcity mentality, instead of like there's only, there's never going to be enough or that there won't be something around when I need it. You have to ask if you trust um, if you can trust the universe to provide what you need when you need it. And for me, that's, you know, do I trust that God's got my back? And yeah. And for us creative people, it's like we like I don't want to be out of something when I want to do something. I want to do it right then and there. I want to have everything I need right available for me. I don't want to have to go hunting for it. I don't want to have to go go out and, and buy it. You know, to stop what I'm doing, because by the time I get home with whatever it is, then you don't have time to actually do it then. And sometimes the creative idea or whatever is no longer as strong. So I like to have everything I ha need right then and there. But the thing it is, the thing of it is creativity thrives in not having enough. It's when you suddenly realize that, oh, I don't really have what I want. What else could I do? What else could I um, use instead? And sometimes it turns out better than, than you would have thought to begin with. So it's like you've heard the saying, necessity is the mother of invention. Well, it's the same kind of thing with creativity. So it's having too much stifles your creativity. And so I have to learn to trust. That whatever it is I need in that moment will be provided. And it, and it always has been in the past. So I've got no reason to believe it won't again in the future. It's not hoarding, it's crafts, if it's craft supplies. I agree. Seriously, I found too much. I really, is really too much. Yep. Having too many options can really interfere with creativity. Absolutely, Tracy. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Yep, exactly. When you have limits, you can be even more creative. At least that's what I found. So, and another takeaway she really helped me see was that 
the universe needs me, not my stuff. Now, this is hard for somebody who's had low self-esteem all her life, thinking that it's me that I need to bring to whatever work it is I'm doing. Not... Um, my stuff doesn't speak for me. I'm... I, I know I'm not explaining it right. I was like that with my children at Christmas. They were going to have everything. I didn't. And it became an issue with marriage. Yeah, tell me I know the feeling. My husband and I really, when we could, we really lavished the kids, you know. And it got to a point where they had too much. Because, you know, they had uncles and they had uh, grandparents and relatives. And it wasn't just us getting them stuff. And then they had too much. And then <clears throat> sometimes we we get them stuff that it was fun for us when we were a kid and we'd let, want them to experience it. And they were like, eh, or it just, there was, they had too much to clean up, you know, they, they couldn't play with everything all at the same time. So then you have to think, well, I'm, do I have to put some of these in the attic for a while and then bring them out, you know, when they're bored with what they've got so that they, you know, like rotate the, the toys when they were real little. We had to do that. So it was always like fresh and new. It just, it just got to be too much. Too much is too much. For sure. And yeah, I can see how that would interfere with a marriage if you couldn't agree on like how much or what to give the kids. And I think once you visited developing countries and you see how even in our poverty we have so much more than people around the world have we get we get this fishbowl type of thinking that you know we only know what we have we only know what we want or what we don't have and you know, then all the, the commercials and, you know, keeps you wanting more. And convinces our kids that, you know, in order to be popular, they need this, that, and the other thing. And then they start begging us for stuff. And It's so crazy. I mean, in Ghana, we went out to the fair. We had been visiting some schools. We went out to their marketplace and bought yard balls and flip-flops and um, material for their uniforms, things like that. They'd have to when they got to school, they'd each be given a chore and they have to sweep the, the yard that's in between their school buildings every morning before the school bell rang. They were some of the happiest children I've ever seen. And they go to school barefoot because they didn't have enough money after school tuition 
to pay for flip-flops. They didn't have any yard balls that they could play with at recess. And this was just a dirt courtyard with a few trees in between, you know, long, narrow school buildings. They had one or two textbooks to share with the entire class. They did all their work on slates. Just like, you know, our country did in the old days. They had a blackboard and they had slates. And they knew three languages from the very beginning. It was just amazing. I'm going someday. I don't want to be remembered because I made one amazing thing. I want to be remembered with a smile by all people that I've gifted my work to that brought them some joy. Absolutely. We want to know that, you know, that we gave people joy, that we brought something more into their lives that they didn't um, enjoyment for them. I'm still sort of like that with my granddaughter. We, she don't get a lot, so I give her everything I can plus more. I think it's guilt with her uh, due to my son inability to buy for her. Yeah, we try to compensate. But they have to learn to live within limits too. Yeah. Oh, it is. We want to know that we brought joy in other people's lives. Tammy's right. Tracy's right. And if we give people everything that we think they need, then they may not, their creativity may not blossom. You know, we didn't really give the kids too many store-bought Halloween costumes. We say, well, what what do you got? What what do we have in the closet? What can we make? You know, think of something really funny and let's let's try to create it. Um, <clears throat> and they'd always come up with something, and it was their idea that we would try to recreate when they needed help. We Helped them out. But I think we have two fairly creative kids now. I know my daughter's creative. There's no two ways about that. My son doesn't call himself creative, but he was. He, he is. I think everybody's creative in a certain way. You don't have to be. I was, we were just talking about this today. You don't have to be artistic. Creative doesn't mean artistic. Creative just means that you can think outside of the box. And everybody has creativity. Whatever field that you're doing, you need to think outside of the box in order to, you know, be the best at what you do, to be really good at what you do. You know, you can be creative in a traditional math sense. You don't have to know how to draw or be able to cut or glue something together. That's just what we traditionally think to be what creativity is. I always made costumes and makeup. My daughter is so creative. I always wear it gets. <laughs> you are where she gets it from then. I am eagerly awaiting when the, the fall TV shows come back on. 
I miss Chicago Med and Law and Order, SVU, and I don't know. There's a bunch of shows that I miss seeing. I've been living almost exclusively on YouTube lately. But uh, there's plenty of movies that I should go back and watch that I haven't watched yet. I'll need it to keep busy. We're waiting to see if my husband is called up to deploy. Oh, my goodness. Well, I hope he doesn't have to go out again. wonder where she gets it from. She can bake, take a partial costume and make it look like store-bought. That's cool. That's really cool. Watching Anne with an E on Netflix. Anne with an E. Is that like Anna Green Gable type thing or there's a lot that I put aside that I want to see a lot of movies that I missed when they were coming into the movie theater that I could go back and watch too. It's just that I don't get much diamond painting done then because because <laughs> I want to actually watch the movie. <laughs> But I guess I would feel more rested if I did that, too. And I'm supposed to be doing some self-care rather than burning myself out again. Oops. So, maybe when Christmas cookies are over, we shall see. Let's see, it's yes, yes, it's good. Are you watching it? Yep, and seen every episode of it and Green Gables. I used to love reading the Anna Green Gables books. The way she described things, the way she talked about the little fairies and in the woods and um, the quaint things about just everyday life with the people. I got where I stopped diamond painting around 10 and go watch TV. I hear the movie Nowhere is good. Oh, I'll have to check into it. Um, yeah, I. there are a lot of shows that I just listen to. <laughs> that I can like, I know what's going on. And I just look up every once in a while and I'm diamond painting at the same time. I think that's kind of why I like YouTubes too, like podcasts or whatever that I can listen and not, not really miss too much going on in the background. And that's where, where I will watch um, like the the dry bar comedy. The comedians from Utah. There was one that was so hilarious this week. I can't remember which what his name is, but he was so funny. Just the turns of phrase that I'd never thought of before. Just so surprising. Um, 
they do a couple different ones a week, maybe even new every day. I'm not sure, but good, clean family fun. That's hilarious, at least to me. He was talking about being single, that the, the world is prejudiced against single people. And that he was upset about <laughs> that even the, the carpool lane is discriminatory against single people. And the symbol for the carpool lane, and this is mostly for California, but I don't know that they have them in the East Coast here too much, but he said that the symbol for the carpool lane is a diamond he said yeah just remind us of the stuff we you know like just remind us of a symbol for those who are engaged or whatever something like that that you'll never have to use when you're um, when you're single Obviously, my delivery sucks, but he just went on this rant about how the world discriminates against single people and was hilarious. Love how she describes the things she sees. Yeah. I like that too. It's been a long time since I've read those, those books. Right now I'm listening to a fiction and it's, um, it's a, uh, It's off a of Preston and Child's book about an FBI agent that sometimes goes rogue, but he solves crimes all over the world. And right now he's on the, the Britannia, um, a ship. He's trying to solve the theft of a Tibetan antiquity and he and his niece are on board this ship called the Britannia and there's a killer on board and he and it's got this mysterious entity to it um, and every one of them of the novels start kind of supernatural sounding but it always ends up being something you know real in the natural world but the intrigue in it is really fascinating and i love the character he's really good a strange eclectic skinny like ichabod crane type of detective Sometimes I'll just listen to, um, I'll just listen to like a book on tape when I'm diamond painting. It's an audible. And that way I get to form pictures in my mind too. <laughs> how are our Phillies doing? Anybody know how our Phillies are doing? They are, today's the last game. If they win tonight, they get into the World Series again. All 
our Philadelphia fans are really rough on their hometown heroes. I'm telling you. We're a really rough group, apparently. And apparently, we, we celebrate things by destroying things, which is not good. <laughs> Oops, there's only two needed here. I voted for the Philly since I was a young kid. I remember the 1980s World Series. I was working at James Way and on service desk. And in between breaks, we'd sneak back to the, the TV section so we would see how the Phillies were doing. They won the World Series that year. And at community college, I got a T-shirt, a red T-shirt with the players names on the back and where they played. Like there's a picture of a baseball diamond and their names in white would be right next to the, where they played on the field. I still have that t-shirt. Not they'll ever be able to wear it again, but it's a fun t-shirt. It was a long time since between that and the next time the Phillies won the World Series. Long time in between. I listened to this new creator, and she lives near the field. And she said they are really loud, the fans. Oh, she lives in Philadelphia near the, near the stadium. Yeah, they can be can be really rowdy. I, we have like a a parade, a winning parade, and they have to they have to grease the light poles because you know the traffic lights and signs because the people like to climb up the poles and start getting in trouble like tearing them down or um they were rolling cars now you see pictures of the riots in la and, and that kind of thing they're doing stupid stuff like that downtown i mean it's supposed to be celebrating something happy and here you are wrecking stuff like, what the heck There, there have been fans that have been ejected from good games because they were throwing drinks on the field during pro games. It's like, why? Why are you ruining the, the atmosphere? No need for that. Four against two against the Diamondbacks. Philly's losing. That figures. That figures. Thank you for the, the score, Trace. That's the Bronco fans. Interesting fact. More than not, they don't live in the city they tear up. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I don't know if that's the same here in Philadelphia. 
I just think we have rowdy fans. I just don't understand the mentality that if you're celebrating something, you destroy something. It doesn't make sense to me. Oh, man, my shoulder hurts. Oh, I'm doing cookies and... Okay, which letter should I work on next? Let's see. I guess the next one in line there. 13. Thirteen green. Thirteen green. Can take the girl out of Philly suburbs, but can't take Philly suburbs out of the girl. <laughs> there you go, Trace. <laughs> I'm not a, you know, sports fan overall. I don't watch games and stuff like, but I, I used to like to watch the Phillies. I like to watch the Phillies play. Do you have a favorite little person at work? Where a little person stays with you always? Um, they don't stay with me always. I mean, they're, they're fourth graders, so they're not too small, but, um, I do have a couple favorite little people. <laughs> One girl. In fact, yesterday I nominated her for a member of the month because she's always, um, she's always volunteering to get something like, like I'm trying to save my energy to actually mop the floor and she'll say, Oh, I'll get the broom for you. And she'll run and go get it. Or, um, <laughs> she's just so cute. And she, I was trying to help her with her homework today and they have a science test. So they bring home the, the, uh, like study papers and I was asked, she and a, another <coughs> um, gal have the same class. So they both have the same study papers. I said, okay, let's study together. And it's on plants and animals. And, you know, name a couple things animals do by instinct or need to be trained to do or like photosynthesis and, and just all kinds of things like that. And... <laughs> There was a couple questions that they weren't getting right away. So I'd like try to figure out ways to help them um, in funny ways or whatever. Memorize some of the facts. So um, <laughs> we were talking about exoskeletons. Like, okay, what does it mean? what kind of animals have their skeleton on the outside and <laughs> I, I gave the example of a roach. Like <laughs> when you, st when you step on it, it crunches or a stink bug. <laughs> they go, Ew. I said, well, you step on the exoskeleton, you're crunching it. <laughs> And then somebody said, you mean like a turtle in the road? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> a turtle shell's an exoskeleton. Ew. They were like, it was really gross. Um, <laughs> but they'll remember it tomorrow. <laughs> they'll remember it in the test for sure. They're not going to forget that example. So... <laughs> 
Ah, uh, yes. Baltimore Orioles fan. Yes. I have a friend who is a uh, other friends who are Orioles fans. You have a nice stadium down there in Baltimore. Very nice stadium. And it was one of the other ones. Oh, 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 oh. Um, another one was like, okay, bird bones are hollow. What are some of the advantages of, of, um, and that's not the one I was thinking of. Um, Uh, let me see. Oh. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. So what do the little, um, how, how does a plant soak up the nutrients? What does it, what part of the plant soaks up the nutrients out of the, the ground? And apparently... And I had forgotten this, that there are little hairs on the ends of roots. And that's how it gets nutrients out of the ground. And I was saying, just think of your hair sucking, you know, like as straws, like sucking stuff out of the ground. And they're going like, ew. <laughs> well, they're not going to forget that too easily either. I said, but this is like underground, you know. So I'm just trying to help them um, remember things in funny ways. They also had math, uh, math tests tomorrow too. And so they were going over that. I'm trying to teach them the trick of their nine times tables using their hands. Instead of counting under the table. <laughs> I'm trying to get the kids through their times tables. And it's, it's hard. Some of them don't see patterns very easily. And that I found fascinating. Like, they'd have, um, they have them add 11 to everything. So if you started out with 11 plus 11 is 22, then 33 and 44 and 55. So they were having a hard time seeing the pattern that it was just the next double number. And um, <laughs> the one girl that I was just talking about, <laughs> she came in one day and she said, Miss Wanda, we got, we got our math homework wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't doubt it, hon. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm not the best at math here. It was only one or two problems and we didn't understand what the teacher wanted out of them, but <laughs> we got our math homework wrong. I thought that was hilarious. You missed the old stadium though. <laughs> I only knew the big one from the highway that, that you pass by as you're driving by. Um, like we, when we were driving by down to um, ST, we would always pass it. I'm not sure if that was the new one or the old one, the Orioles Stadium. <clears throat> I 
I like to go to the the baseball games that are like the double A league. We have one in Reading and one in Allentown. And they're so much fun. You're in a ballpark where you can see everything and hear everything. And there's fun games in between the some of the innings. And they're like um, fireworks night or M&M's night or something like that. And you get all kinds of prizes when you go. They're a lot of fun to go to the AAA ball leagues. And, you know, sometimes you see up-and-coming players that uh, will have a famous name within the organization eventually. Because that's where the professional players come from, playing in those leagues. Boy, we do get on a range of topics, don't we? I ones. Yeah. Yeah, we do. But right now I'm teaching them, like, trying to have them go over their times tables. Like, we... I, one of them had really a lot of trouble with fours. And that's as far as I've gotten with some of them. The twos, they're finally getting really easily. And then... Um... The threes, they were struggling with a little bit until you, until you tell them to just add three to the last number, add three to the last number, add three to the last number. And then there's, there's two kids that are so smart. They can whip through really fast, but then they try to do things too fast. And it's like, no, slow down, you know. And double check your answer. Trying to get them to double check their answers when they think they're finished is so hard because they just want to be done. I remember that feeling. I just want to be done. Don't ask me to double check things. I think we all know that feeling. G is number six. G, number six. Number six. More green. More green, more green. <laughs> um, I really miss camping in this weather. I miss chilly nights where you'd have to snuggle in the sleeping bag outside, but then you could go out and have a campfire and sit around the campfire and sing. And um, I love the smell of a good wood fire, either in a fireplace or in a, in a campground, you know, in a fire ring. I really miss that. October was always a great month to go camping with the scouts. It's going to be in the 70s here this week. And it's almost November. So who would, you know, who'd think? I just love that. And then walking over crackly leaves. That's what I miss about camping. Fresh air. Anybody else ever go camping? Any of y'all go camping? Either with scouting or with the family. I know Tracy has. <laughs> uh. 
Any, did I miss any, uh, any other interesting information in the diamond painting community this week? Did I miss any news of goings on? I hear Dreamer Design is having a buy one, get one 60% off sale this week. Let me see here. We're having extremely warm weather in Colorado. Normally it's cold. Yep. Yeah, I did when we were little. We did when my kids were little. I used to love it. Yeah, me too. 16 years of scouting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> nope, just the pens. So I'm not missing anything. Just the only thing new is the pens. Oh, well. I guess all is quiet until everybody's gearing up for Black Friday. I have no idea. I'm really trying not to not to purchase anything right now. And I don't really need to. Oh, come on. I hate it when that they don't come off the the pen here. And you lift it up and there's like a hole there. Tracy, are you going to be home tomorrow? Maybe we can talk sometime during the day. Before I have to go to work at three. I want to catch part of a seminar on using. Um, It's using AI, using chat GPT for managing your YouTube channel and things like that for making uh, courses. And I signed up for part of that. So maybe in the morning I'll be watching that. But I'd love to chat if you have time tomorrow. I have another friend that wants to call me after after school tomorrow. It's so cool. I've got th um, three friends, at least three friends now that I've had for for a long time that I've gotten back into. Um, regular contact with I'm just I love it I really love it you know just like Tracy you know like friends that even though you haven't talked for a while it it just seems like you were just talking yesterday you jump back into your relationship like right where you left off and like there wasn't any time in between I really love that No matter how busy I get, I still want to always have time for my friends. We 
we can't take for granted the days that we have. Morning. Okay, wait a second. I'm going to get back up here for a second. No, it just depends. Used to camp in a tent years ago. Dak is sure putting out a lot of DPs for Christmas. I know they are. I got two. I got two of them coming up. I'm not sure which ones they have out on the Instagram right now. They may have already put mine out, and I haven't gotten my sneak peeks out yet. Next time I went out for Black Friday, I wrecked the car. Oh God! Then don't go out. Wait for Cyber Saturday and do it all online. Do not go out. Morning till one. Oh, rats. Well, maybe we have time on Friday. I have time Friday. We can chat during the day. I have all day Friday till I go to work. I need to order special drills for my special diamond painting event for November. Then I want to order a pen. I want to order a custom pen. I want the design with lung cancer pen. Hey, that's a great idea. Don't understand that AI art stuff. The I, you know, the AI art. I think they have a ways to go before it takes off. But this would be AI for like. Um, coming up with ideas, titles and ideas and that kind of thing for like your YouTube channel and oh no oh, don't show them, don't show them <laughs> oh geez me and my Hamel Camel haircut <laughs> she's gonna bribe me with my school photos of myself <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I have Nathan, but yes, Friday will work. Okay, great. Great, great, great. I'm going to write it in here. So there we go. You're in. You're in for Friday. And there for a moment, I was thinking Nathan Fillion. <laughs> like, dang, girl. <laughs> I was going to have to find a brown coat. <laughs> I... I'm not doing, okay, you asked for Tammy, Tammy's November event. I'm not doing a November event. <laughs> I knew you'd want to see a home. I'm like, oh, rats. Oh, I had braces. I was so geeky. <laughs> well, I don't care. They're already out in the public. What can I do about them? I <laughs> Oh, God. I looked so geeky. I was the Little Miss Library aid. Another friend reminded me that... Okay, I was going out with my... My husband and I were dating in high school. And she reminded me that they used to call us the Jolly Green Giant and his little sprout because Mark is 6'4 and I'm 5'1. <clears throat> so, but my grandparents were like that too the high low. <laughs> So, what else did she, she reminded me of something else, too. 
this week. Tracy, I don't remember if you ever met Sharon. Sharon was in in with chat like not last week but the week before. What did she? Uh, she wasn't in Girl Scouts with us. So I, I don't know if you would have met her like at a birthday party or something. When you were both there together. Maybe if you saw a picture of her. <laughs> I know you want to see. <laughs> Sparkle Addiction and Ever Moment. Very good. You may do jingles. Zara and I were talking the other day about um, what we're going to do in January. Called New Beginnings. That's what we're calling it. <clears throat> so we're, we're trying to work up what we're going to do for January. For New Beginnings Challenge. Whoopsie. I see not all of those made it into their little baggie. That was this one. Yeah. You were in the hospital. I know, honey. I know. I know you weren't here two weeks ago. I encourage um, everybody in the in the chat to pray for each other in between times. Um, you never know. You know we're we're away from each other during the week, but you never know. Um, health-wise or, or whatever what happens to to us during the week so i'm just asking everybody to you know pray for each other in between things if you wouldn't mind please just remember or you know light and light a candle or just just some protection for each other during the week You know, family that prays together, so to speak. I'm hoping that our um, saying prayers for Michelle helped her situation turn out good this week. And you know, we're hoping the same for. I, I won't assume anything, Trace. That's whatever you want to mention is up to you. It's okay if you want to. I don't, I, you know, I'm sworn to confidentiality as part of my oath of office, so to speak. So I don't do that, but you may share whatever you'd like to. I totally totally agree with that the biggest threat for those of us with depression is the thought that we are alone in our fight the truth is we never know who else is having the same fight i completely agree with you ah and tammy's cough has gotten better see you pray for each other and we're there with us each other i never want you to feel so alone that you can't that you can't, you know, just call and say, hey.
it would it would just it would absolutely kill me to think that I wasn't available if somebody needed to just chat to just not be did not feel alone for a few minutes. Please don't ever think that you don't that you can't call me. That that would just kill me. No. Um, I uh, had a meltdown a couple weeks ago, and I'm back on my depression meds. Not the full thing, but I'm on some of them again. I wanted to see for a while what was attention deficit and what was depression. And so I, so, you know, I'd been on and off depression meds since I was a little girl. So, um, but of course we didn't have, it It wasn't called attention deficit when we were little. So I wanted to know whether it was really depression or whether it was attention deficit. Well, it turns out I'm battling both, but I had to find that out. Um, so, but I feel much better on both a medication that also helps fibromyalgia pain and depression at the same time as I'm on meds for ADD. And, you know, there have been relatives who have not had the benefit of medications like we do. And... doesn't always turn out good. I tend to be super chicken at certain things. Um, Like I've had a relative who cut themselves and there's no way that I could do that. I'm, uh, I don't like pain. <laughs> I'm too afraid of pain. Um, so I don't think I'd ever go that route, but. We all do other things and we think we're alone in the world. And the fact is that we never are. We're never alone. It just feels like that. Yep. Yep. I wish I had this group a year ago. Oh, well, we wish we had you a year ago, too. You're sorry. Catching up on my local news. Oh, no, Tracy, I'm so glad you didn't succeed. Please know that we're here for you. Yes. 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 And I just found out about it tonight when she emailed me before before chat and I was so hoping you you come in chat tonight. I'm glad you're here. Not just here tonight in chat. I'm glad you're here. Period. You have you do bring joy to other people and not just with your creativity and what you make just by being you and your grandson. 
I, I can't, you know, you don't want your grandson growing up without knowing you. I know things are super tough sometimes. Especially when certain anniversaries come rolling around. And this goes for anybody out there <coughs> who's <sighs> who watches this at a, a later date. Don't hesitate when you feel alone to reach out to a friend, any friend. Any friend. If you don't think you have friends, you know, there's always somebody you can talk to. There's even prevention hotlines. And they do a lot of good. Um, the, the, the brave people that are working those hotlines care a great deal about people in general. And <clears throat> care a great deal about making sure others don't feel alone because they have probably attempted things themselves and they have a lot of wisdom and hope that they can share but so do friends I just <sighs> If you need one of us, please let us know on Facebook or Messenger. And you can call me, any one of us here. Absolutely. Absolutely. I kind of freaked the nurses out when I woke up. They told me I wasn't out of the woods yet. I said, well, don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. My son hasn't shown up to get me. <laughs> yeah. Is it close to... The anniversary of his passing, Trace. I forget what time of year that was. Sometimes when we get close to those anniversaries, it's even harder. Um, Sharon, who was in with this a couple weeks ago, she lost her brother the same way. Oh, August 17th was his birthday, December 17th. So you're right in between the two. So his birthday is close to ours then.
You know what? Sharon's birthday is in December, too. All three of us are in December. Hers is the beginning of the month. Yours is closer to mine. Right? Now i got to look at my calendar. Oops, that's not my calendar. Now i got to look at my calendar. Yours is the 7th. Hers is the 6th, I think. So she and yours are close together. And I'm the one at the other end of the month. <clears throat> yeah. Yours is the 7th. Sharon's is the 6th. On St. Nick Day. I'm down on the 21st. My nephew's is the 6th, 17th. <clears throat> I'm missing my dad so much. Oh, Tammy. His birthday just passed. He's been gone six years now. But for some reason, I'm really missing him. Yeah, mine, uh, my dad was gone 11 years now, and I miss him every single day. When's my birthday? 21st. I'm really close to Christmas. December 21. I will be 46 in 93 days. I'm a month after Christmas. Okay, so you're a January baby, says my husband. What day in January, Michelle? I probably have it in my book, actually. Come to think of it. My husband's on the 24th. And here's the 25th. Okay. The day after my husband's. There you go. We should celebrate everybody's birthdays in January and December and January. Now, I thought I did that letter already. No, I didn't. So, it's still there. No, I know I did that. Excuse me. I know I did that one. And where is it? I did it last night, not tonight. Oh, my leg's going numb sitting here. There's the 11. What time is it? Oh my gosh, it's 11 o'clock already. Guys, it's 11.17 already. Here I'm thinking I'm trying to... I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to come up with more things to say and everything in between. And it's already after 11. <laughs> you quit having birthdays, Tammy. <laughs> Every time something always happens this year. Yeah, you were so sick. Oh. Yeah, I quit counting which birthday it was, but <laughs> after 21, who cares, right? 24th is not a good day for you. This coming 24th will be two years since your uncle passed. I'm so sorry. I know. Can you imagine? It is 1118. When you said you wanted, you were going to watch the local news, I thought, oh, it must be the 10 o'clock news. I'm thinking, oh, it must be, you know, early yet. Yeah. I'm like, darn. Oops. Well, I'm going to have to let you all go. I do need to get some rest before the morning. I'm going to watch some TV yet, but I will. I have to plug in my my light bright here. And keep working. I'm sure I'll have this to show you when I'm when I'm done next week. I 
I kind of enjoy working on the the um, the thirty by thirties right now. There's something to be said, you know, like Michelle does. There's something to be said for doing a bunch of smaller ones and having that sense of accomplishment that you got something done. You were you were thinking it was the ten o'clock news too. <laughs> Just think we we're dragging on conversation. Yeah, we were dragging the conversation in the beginning. And I, I mean, I was trying <laughs> with cookies and, and uh, organizing. We kind of limped along a little bit in the beginning, but I don't know if we still have Dawn. And oh, Dawn was here with us not too long ago. Very shortly ago, and um, Lucretia was here, and let's see. Uh, let me go back up in the chat and see who else popped in before. Snuggie was in for a bit. Marla was here in the beginning. I think I got everybody. Yeah, Dawn and Marla were here at, with Michelle at first. And uh, anybody who watches the the repeats, I just want to let everyone know that hey, if you need if anybody needs a friend to talk to, if it gets to that point, it, it, way before it gets to that point, if you just need somebody to talk to, you just need to know somebody out there is thinking about you. If you just want somebody, you know, to pray with you, put something in the Facebook group or private chat me or or email me at Wanda's Workbasket at gmail.com. I might not get back to you immediately, but I will get back to you. Um, somebody on the Facebook group will give you a shout out and say, call me and they'll give you your phone number. Don't, don't be alone. Don't be alone. You know, you're a sister or a brother to us. And, and that's the truth. That's the truth. Good night, Dawn. I'm, I'm going to say good night to everybody. Trace, I'll talk to you on Friday. Uh, let's see. And I will have more cookies to share for next week. <laughs> let's see. Oh, yeah, that's a tea time thing. I'm just looking at my... And I, I, can, I can describe to you our um, Boys and Girls Club... Halloween night. Oh my gosh, next week is Halloween. I'll still be here. Nobody knocks on my door. So I'll still be here. And I'll tell you all about my Boys and Girls Club Halloween night. So everybody have a great week. I am going to go get some sleep soon. Good night, everybody. <laughs> As Sally Star used to say, love, luck, and lollipops. Mwah. <laughs> Remember that, Trace? Remember Sally Star? <laughs> oh, good. Good. I can't wait to see the picture of your journal. All right, gals. I will see you next week. Take care. Take good care of yourself, too. Okay, Tammy. Whatever you can make is fabulous. All right, guys. Later, Gators. Bye.